now Pet Away. And I'm here at Dream Guitars because I wanted to show you this, uh, not only this beautiful Al Petaway model guitar, that just happens to be what I'm using. It's not what this lesson is about. Um, I'm going to show you this tuning that it's a really common tuning. Um, I use it in a lot of different kinds of tunes, tunes that sound more country, some tunes that sound more um, uh, funky. But uh, one of my favorite things about it is all the dissonant chords that you can get that just sound beautiful. And... Um, it's also very flexible. I'll tell you what it is first. It, it's it's a low tuning. The only tune, string that goes up is the second string, but the, the lowest string is the C. And then this, normally an A, goes down to a G. And then the next one is a, down to a C. Your G string stays the same. So, so far we have fifths, C, G, C, G. And then another C. And then what's the, the, the thing you have at your command here is the next string. It can be, if you wanted a major key all the time, you could tune that to an E or just leave it at an E and you would have a C major chord. Um, what I do is I put it to a D. And that allows you to be either major or minor just by moving in a half step and I, I prefer those kinds of tunings it's sort of like the dad gad tuning that I use a lot it, I, I prefer those tunings because of that that way it can be used either direction minor major um, it just doesn't push you into any one of those things um, but this tune that I, I was going to show you broken mist um, is one that I wrote um, a long time ago but it's still one of my favorite tunes to play and part of it is because I'm playing what feels like a normal chord under my fingers, but it comes out, out sounding like something really spectacular that I, you know, I, I stumbled on it strictly. I wasn't writing this out on paper. I found it strictly by playing a chord that I was familiar with. Um, but when you put them in an arpeggiated sort of fashion, it, you can get these beautiful... These beautiful sounding... Um, almost magical sounding chords and I'm playing what is basically like a what would be a, a A minor shape moved up the neck and you can use that chord or you can lift your second finger and use this chord and I don't even know what these are because they're so outside of what I would consider you know a one three five sort of chord it's just they're full of suspension, so you're always your ear is always go, taking that chord and comparing it to the root. So it doesn't stand on its own at any time. So I'm going to play a little bit of the beginning of it and show you what I mean. So I right away, right there, it can be major or minor because I could go, and that would be major, but I decided to go minor, so I went. This is just, and this feels like what you would be playing on a regular guitar, it would be a uh, root, fifth root, but here we've got a little bit of a suspension going on. It's another one of those chords where played by itself, the second sound really dissonant, but when you get it like this. Doesn't sound dissonant anymore. It fits. It fits with that. So that feels like it's. I'm playing a B flat open fifth, and then back to this. And here on the third fret, I'm barring everything except for these two. So it's almost like the minor thing, but with my finger lifted. And what I'm really doing is playing a melody in there and letting the melody ring as part of that weird chord. So the melody is... And then... Now 
I'm going to play what looks like a C chord with your first finger lifted. Same chord. So all of that from a technical, physical thing is really easy on your left hand. You're never playing, I think, more than three notes at a time with the left hand, this sort of thing, um, or this. Okay, so after we finish this first section, it's, there's a second section that does a cross string melody that I really like, and it's you first, it's your second string, and then your first string, and then on the third string, up on the eighth fret, is your next note of the scale. So, your melody and fingering here is, is up to you you can do I like to use second and fourth for some reason I guess it gives me more possibilities between um, but you know that's totally up to you uh, and then coming down basically coming down the scale in harmony that cool chord this is on the uh, sixth fret and then we're going to land on an open fifth here's your five chord so just these two fingers and what I love about that is because you've got C, G, C, G, C near G's, five chord is, is there, your one chord is here, it's easy to find always, you know. Um, so. And then here's the other thing I do, I um, take that melody and put ornaments around it. The second time through, so it may go like I mean that's a lot, but and I love to take this chord and retard it so it just and then go back into the tempo. two sections but when I was before we did this recording for you to teach this tune I started playing with those chords just as full chords um, and immediately I started thinking of jazz things you know so when you hear these dissonant chords played in this context they just sound like something about them just sounds pretty and magical but if you hear that played with the notes played at the same time just take the exact same chords and turn them into sort of a out jazz tune and all you've done is change the way your right hand works you don't have to you know what I'm doing on Broken Mist is all beautiful open arpeggios played really slow so the melody hangs over itself but then start thinking of that sort of stuff and, I, and since I started off as a bass player this tuning is so nice for playing bass licks because you're just, just an open fist so I can do it 
it's it's fun just knowing that you can't make a mistake just staying on the same fret. <laughs> Um, and that's because of all the open fifths. So back to the, I'll just to, to finish up the lesson, I just want to tell you again, we're basically C, G, C, G, C, and then with the D on top. And almost the entire melody is built off the first string. you hit with it, they're going to sound good. And it makes your guitar sound like it's giant, especially when you're plugged in. It's just so awesome to hear that low C. So um, give it a shot. I mean, C tuning's fun. I've always enjoyed it. I, you know, I just get inspired every time I do it because it's not my normal tuning. So I, I get inspired. I'll probably go home right now and just write a whole new tune because I've been thinking about all these cool chords, which I don't normally do. Thinking can get you in trouble sometimes. So there you go. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs>